Welcome, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Did you know that Jesus was the anointed one? And what does it mean to be anointed? Well, it means that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is all over that individual leading them and guiding them to speak God's holy word, God's powerful holy word. And of course, we know that Jesus Christ himself was the word because it says in the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and there was no thing that was created without the Word. And the Word was the light of men, and the darkness perceived it not. But God anoints the ones that have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior because Scripture teaches us that when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And He has great and mighty things in store for us in this life and in eternal life to come. And we will be kings and priests and rulers in that eternal home that God will have for us. But while we are here on this earth, God wants us to live right and he wants us to speak his anointed word so that we can bring others into the kingdom and save their souls from an eternal damnation in hell. But if you'll take a look at some of the people in the Bible that were highly anointed by God, we can see, like for instance, John the Baptist. And Scripture teaches us that John the Baptist made a way for the Savior to prepare a way. And it says, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. See, the word of God came to him. When we are anointed by God, he will give us his word. He will lead us and guide us, and he'll tell us what to do. And that's what was happening here to John. It says, and he went into all the region around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And then, later on, he's talking to the multitudes. And they came out to be baptized by John the Baptist. And then he speaks out and he says, Brood of vipers! Now I remember one time when Jesus was talking to the hypocrites the religious leaders of the day and he called them a brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance God wants us to bear good fruit if we don't bear good fruit then we're not on the correct path we're not on the right path that God wants us to be on and we need to be diligent and take care about the life that we live and not get off into sin. Bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Those religious leaders of the day in Jesus' day they thought they were so special because Abraham was their father. But they weren't living right. 
they were living as snakes, hypocrites. That's why John the Baptist called them brood of vipers. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Now, that's not very good when God pronounces judgment on a person. And that's what that means. The axe is laid to the root of the trees. And therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And if you think about it, the Bible has a whole lot to say about trees. Look at the beginning of Genesis. It talks about the tree of good and evil and the tree of life. Remember, God gave Adam and Eve that commandment not to eat of the tree of good and evil. And they disobeyed him. They ate of the tree of good and evil. And it opened up their eyes and they realized that they had sinned. They were disobedient to God. So they were cast out of the garden. When you disobey God and go against his commandments, then you will receive judgment against you. And then there was that tree of life. And he protected that tree of life because he didn't want Adam and Eve to eat of that tree of life and then be in that sinful state forevermore. And that would have brought down the human race forevermore. So God protected you and he protected me from eternal damnation. But it is up to us to accept the salvation that God provided on that old rugged tree. I will cling to the old rugged cross forevermore. God, Jesus incarnate, did a great and mighty work on that cross. He hung on that tree and he made a way, he paved a way for each person that has ever been born to be saved from an eternal hell. And I have accepted him as my Savior. How about you? Accept Jesus as your Savior today and stay on the right path. And God, in this verse, the word given to John the Baptist is referring to each person as a tree. Will you bear good fruit or will you bear bad fruit, poor fruit? God wants us to bear good fruit and live for him the way we're supposed to. And there are many references to trees in the Bible. And we shall be like trees planted by the water when we stay with our Savior and we seek his face. And we will bring forth wonderful, excellent, succulent fruit. And we will be great witnesses for other people that we come in contact with. And look at that tree in the very last chapter of Revelation, the very last chapter of the whole Bible, talks about the tree of life. And so we will see that wonderful tree of life when we pass on from this life and we will live with God forevermore and we will see that tree of life and that's a gift that God has prepared for us and we will have eternal life and thank God for the old rugged cross that old rugged tree and 
the Bible tells us that everyone that hangs on a tree is cursed. And that was referring to Jesus bore the curse of sin on that old rugged tree. That cross, he bore that curse of sin for us so that we wouldn't have to be cursed with sin forever. So go on from this day forth and have a made up mind. I'm going to bear good fruit, excellent fruit for the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <music>